vegan processed stuff that comes out all the time that gets better and better and better. I mean, look at the state of mock meats now. Tastes absolutely disgusting. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to react again to Unnatural Vegan. She just came out with a video called How to Fail on a Vegan Diet. What I've learned from ex-vegan YouTubers. Me being an ex-vegan, I feel personally attacked here and I'm going to react to her video. Let's have a look. So I've had my fair share of encounters, I guess you could say, with ex-veganism here on this channel. I've looked at a lot of different cases, a lot of different why I'm no longer vegan videos. And while some Anecdotes. of these seem maybe a little bit more legitimate, I guess you could say, than others, you know, really came down to something that was uh, out of the person's hands, out of their control, some sort of health scare. You can check out my video about Megan Moon for an example of that. A lot of them are, are quite a bit different than that, I would say, or have some some really good lessons in there about kind of how to do veganism incorrectly because there's a lot of overlap among these videos. Never heard that argument before. You did it wrong. Again, I'm not saying that every single person who isn't vegan anymore did it wrong. I don't believe that at all. <laughs> you don't. I have a whole video <laughs> on reasons why people would have to go uh, back to, even back to eating meat in some cases. I don't want oh, wow. anyone to think I'm that sort of vegan, but... How tolerant of you. Certainly, if you've seen a lot of the I'm no longer vegan videos, there, there are some common threats. So basically, I'm going to teach you how to fail on a vegan diet. <laughs> That's probably what I'll call this video. So to start I can teach you that in one sentence. Eat a vegan diet. To start with, I'll go through a few that are really focused on nutrition because I think that's that's really the biggest issue. The first one would be <laughs> live on... Being focused on nutrition makes you fail on a vegan diet. That says everything you need to know about a vegan diet. And it is true. I fully agree with you here, natural vegan. If you focus on nutrition, you will fail as a vegan because you will see that it is inadequate. Simple as that. The vegan diet does not provide any vitamin D3, any cholesterol, any creatine, etc., etc., etc. It is not found in plants. And this is why, if you look into nutrition, you will be an ex vegan. Very, very simple. On rice and potatoes and fruit, just eat a really high carb, low fat, restrictive vegan diet. Obviously, you're going to find examples of vegans who have been vegan for a long time and they eat this way. Yeah. But I would guess. <laughs> I would even go so far and say that the high carb vegans have a higher success rate. Some of them are still vegan to this very day. So this is not a good argument. The majority of us who have attempted to eat that way didn't do it for very long. It just makes it a lot more difficult to get adequate nutrition when you are limiting fat to such a degree. 10% yeah. or less is pretty common. 10% or less of total calories. When you're limiting yourself to plants, it makes it way harder to sustain that. Pretty much impossible. Is focusing so much on carbs, particularly if you're focusing a lot on fruit, it's going to be hard to meet certain mineral needs like calcium and iron and zinc and feeling satisfied. How about protein? Certainly some people can, but for many of us, we need more protein in our diet. Yes. We need more fat in our diet to feel Thank you. Sushi. But how do you do that? By eating tofu, by eating soy protein? Where do you get high quality saturated fats? Where do you get high quality protein? You don't have it in plants. I would guess the majority of the ex-vegan videos <sighs> I've talked about are from people with a background of eating these really high carb really high fruit, if not high fruit, like raw vegan diets and just eating a, a very, very restrictive vegan diet. Actually, those guys, I forgot their name, but Drew Morgan, a good online friend of mine, if you will, lived with those people. He lived with them in Hawaii and they were planting their own food. They weren't restrictive at all. They didn't eat a high carb fruitarian diet. They planted their own food. They had adequate amounts of calories, etc., etc. But thank God they got a child and they woke up because they understood it is not adequate. It is not a human specific diet. Very simple. A very restrictive vegan diet. 
Number two would be no. avoid supplements. And I think that the main one is pretty obvious here. It's B12. Every single vegan needs to take a B12 supplement. I think the rest my case. Most vegans acknowledge that now. It seems like the- What else is there to say? I mean, B12 is only the tip of the iceberg. We do know that you need vitamin D3. In some cases, creatine. If you look into the studies, of creatine supplementation in vegans, you see enormous improvements, especially in brain health. Creatine is needed. Yes, it is essential as well, even though people want to call it a non-essential amino acid. It is ridiculous. Of course, it is essential. You cannot produce it yourself in adequate uh, Mounts. And this is what is happening here. You essentially become a patient. You get sick and you need to rely on supplements. I'm not ideological when it comes down to this. I like cod liver oil, for example, which is not really a supplement in that sense, but more an oil extract. But either way, I am supplementing with it. And on every supplement bottle, at least back in the day, it clearly said those supplements are not here in order to replace a healthy diet, but to supplement it. That was it. Now you're replacing food with supplements. And that is, of course, the danger because it has not been proven that supplementation leads to adequate outcomes. So you are putting people in danger. That's it. Anti B12 wow. supplement sort of crowd has either stopped being vegan or switched over to, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe we do need to supplement. But it's not B12. There are other nutrients of concern. Nutrients <laughs> that are a little bit- Look at this. The nutrients that require extra attention from vegans. Of course, this is just a euphemism. This has nothing to do with extra attention. The reality is you're not getting adequate amounts. This is dangerous. Protein. No plant has adequate amounts of protein. Fact. Oh, by food combining, blah, blah. Fact. Calcium, you know it. How will you get it? Out of leafy greens? Fantastic. By getting a ton of oxalates in your body as well. That will lead to kidney stones. Iron. You don't have heme iron in plants. It is proven that heme iron gets absorbed way better than any type of iron in plants. When my fiance was vegan, she supplemented iron and she was eating lentils and all kinds of iron rich foods on her plant based diet. She was constantly anemic. Nothing helped. The supplements didn't get absorbed either. And we went to the doctor even. So she got them prescribed. It wasn't an over counter supplement, it was an iron supplement that should have addressed her deficiency, but it did not work. After eating a ketogenic diet, her iron levels are perfect. How do you explain that? You don't. Zinc, vitamin A, no such thing. You can't have vitamin A on a vegan diet. It is just beta carotene. So now maybe it's going to get converted. Maybe, maybe not. What do you do then? Omega-3 fats you do not have. You only have ALA. It needs to get converted. What do you do then? If it doesn't really convert, who cares? Just go vegan, everybody. Vitamin B12, needless to say, not found in plants. Vitamin D, not found in plants. Oh, vitamin D mushrooms. How about vitamin D3? You cannot find it because it is based on the precursor cholesterol. It is not found in plants. More difficult maybe to get on a vegan diet if you aren't paying attention <laughs> vegan. to what you're eating. Protein <laughs> and in particular lysine, wow. the amino acid lysine is one of these. Oh. Again, if you're eating these sorts of high carb, lots of potatoes and rice and fruit, you might not be getting enough lysine or even overall protein, depending on how many calories you're eating. If you're eating 3000 calories of potatoes and rice and fruit, you're probably fine. But then you're also eating 3000 calories. For most people like me, small- You're probably fine. How can you believe this? Do you really believe that if you, as a human, eat only potatoes, you're gonna be fine? Really, is this what you believe? Or, you know, ladies, that's, wow. uh, that's maybe a bit much. Even when I work out, I eat max like 2200, and I'm by no means uh, super thin. Of course, lysine you can get from what food very easily, again, as long as you're eating lysine-rich vegan sure. foods like Super beans easy. and peanuts and tofu. They don't understand that only because it is in those plants, it doesn't mean that you will absorb it. 
That's the whole point. Why don't you understand this? Years and years into veganism, people still don't get it. Yes, plants have protein, but can you absorb it? Grass has protein. This is why the cow eats it. Can you absorb it? No, you cannot. Therefore, it does not matter what chronometer says. The question is, how is it absorbed by you, you personally? And peanuts and wow. tofu. But something like calcium is a little bit more difficult because there are specific foods that you want to be eating, mm -hmm. not spinach. I can't believe I still see stuff like this coming from like mainstream vegan organizations, animal rights organizations like Mercy for Animals. No, spinach is not a good source of calcium. Stop. I know they just Bam. have whoever running their Instagram account who just posts stuff, I'm sure. But like, maybe don't do that. <laughs> it's kind of important that you provide accurate information. Tell us. At least have someone check over that stuff before it goes live. Luckily, pretty much all the comments are people saying like, uh, Who's checking over your stuff? No. Wow. No. No. Yeah, oxalates. Now they get it. And the only reason, hands down, that vegans start to wake up is because of ex-vegans on YouTube. I salute every ex-vegan on YouTube that talked about this. You are saving vegans' lives. It's really true. Oxalates lead to kidney stones. Nobody knew that. Everybody was chucking down green smoothie after green smoothie, kale shake, spinach shake, etc., etc., destroying their health. So thanks to ex-vegans that they came out and spoke about this. Without us, you would be lost. No. So yeah, some vegetables, some greens, some dark leafy greens are wow. good sources of calcium, but it's only particular one. So if you are going to <laughs> rely on whole foods to meet your calcium needs. So therefore calcium set tofu, which is a supplement, fortified plant milks, which is neither milk nor natural. It is again supplemented, fortified and fortified juices. Again, nobody will guarantee you that you can absorb that. It's a fact. You really need to make sure you are eating wow. those particular greens in relatively large amounts on a regular basis, which for a lot of us is maybe not something we're going to be able to stick with to keep up with. So it Yeah, but why though? You're a herbivore after all, right? So why don't you just eat grass? Why don't you eat those greens? You should be enjoying them. It should be an absolute joy to eat it if it is your species specific diet. It might be easier to just supplement for it. And the easiest way to do that is to use a calcium fortified soy milk, almond milk, cashew wow. milk, whatever. Vitamin D is whatever. Who cares that almonds and cashews destroy the environment and lives of the workers? Who cares? Another one, obviously, go you vegan get it from the sun, but obviously the sun also causes cancer and it can yeah, maybe be a everything. little bit difficult to strike that balance, particularly wow. if you have darker skin, you have to spend even more time in the sun for your body to produce enough vitamin D. So for some of us, it might make more sense to just there's absolutely no proof that Europeans ever produced adequate amounts of vitamin D just by the sun. No proof whatsoever. They always ate organs. Let's take a supplement for it. DHA oh, might man. be one as well. Uh, there's no clear evidence that it's beneficial for vegans or for anyone really or what the <laughs> adequate or optimal intake would actually be. But no. it seems that a lot of the more credible vegan RDs do take it themselves. So I personally do take a vegan DHA. But I think that- And by that, you're the first human being, essentially, the first generation of human beings that is supplementing an algae extract. And we already find conflicting evidence. Could lead to cancer. There are solvents within those supplements, etc., etc., etc. But the fish, they're eating the algae. You're not a fish. <laughs> they're not eating an algae extract. They're eating algae. Maybe thing here is just to not be anti-supplement. There's no reason to be just because something no is reason. synthetic doesn't mean it's harmful for you. There's doesn't no mean... reason to be anti-supplement. There's no reason to be anti-vex. Just obey. Mean that it couldn't <laughs> potentially benefit uh, you and actually improve your this diet. Is beautiful. Number three, believe that vegan junk foods are only for transitioning. This is wow. something I hear all- Wow. I really don't know what to say anymore. And she feels competent to speak about this. This is why they always take this get out of jail free card when they say it has nothing to do with diet. It is an ethical movement. 
Yeah, because your diet is crap. That's what this is. Fearing vegan junk food. You should be fearing junk food in general because you're putting something into your body that does not belong there. Do you understand this? Especially from this atheistic vegan perspective. You do believe in evolution. You do believe in the mainstream narrative. So how can you believe then that nothing, absolutely nothing will happen when you ingest something that isn't made for your physiology? Right? You're putting something into your body that has no place in there. You know that this is full with plant oils. They lead to heart attack. So obviously you should have a healthy fear of those things. Why would you eat them in the first place? For transitioning. Wow. This is something I hear all of the time. I get this comments video is gold, from man. vegans who seem very confused that I consume vegan junk foods. And by vegan junk foods, I mean like anything processed that's vegan from mock meats to vegan ice creams whatever they're very whatever. surprised because it's supposed to be just a transition food and then you're supposed to wean off of it at some point i guess if someone wants to do that if they feel that you know it's just harder maybe to eat healthfully if they're eating lots of processed stuff i totally but you don't even understand what healthy means you really don't i'm trying to convey this to your audience you do not have any idea what you speak about. It's a fact. I get that. There are wow. certain foods I've talked about that like I don't have in the house because I just I just eat all of them. Fruit snacks. I can't have fruit snacks. I don't know why fruit snacks are so funny to me, but I can't. I can't. I love them so much. I will eat like 10 packs uh. a day. It's ridiculous. Peanut butter pretzels. Oh, no. Point is, if someone just has... Point is, you're starving. This is why you have a food obsession. That's it. More success and feels better overall because they eat healthier by just being totally abstinent, I guess, practicing abstinence when it comes to like any junk foods. That's totally fine. But to have this kind of view that it's only for a particular period in time and then you're supposed to get off of them because why? Because they're that unhealthy that you can't have any? Yes, actually vegan junk food is unhealthier than regular junk food. If you eat, for example, a triple cheeseburger, at least you're getting a bunch of saturated fats and a bunch of protein. At least something. Sure, you still have the crappy bread, but at least you're getting nutrition. With vegan junk food, you're not getting anything. It is most of the time simply plant oils. Look at vegan cheese. It is horrific. <laughs> Processed foods. That's pretty over the top. You've probably yeah, heard of totally. like the 80. Just moderate. Just be like everybody else in this society. 20 rule or even the 90-10 rule wow. when it comes to nutrition <sighs> to make so 80 dead. to 90 percent of your diet, of your calories coming from healthy stuff, and then the 10 to 20 percent whatever junk you want, because that's going to make the biggest difference. There are diminishing returns. And so thinking that, you know, removing that tiny bit of extra junk is going to be just as important as get. You have absolutely no proof for that. Again, you have zero evidence to support that claim. Don't get me wrong, I'm not religious about food. If you want to eat a burger here and there, go for it. I'm not here to judge you, but the point of the story is that this has nothing to do with sustainability, it has nothing to do with health, it has nothing to do with veganism, it has nothing to do with anything. I don't understand why you even talk about this. You simply display that you have no idea about nutrition. That's all. We do not know what happens if you eat 20% of junk food. Doesn't sound healthy to me. Eating hmm. enough fiber, eating your fruits and vegetables every day and eating whole grains and eating beans. It's no, there's no evidence that having like a couple pieces of chocolate or a small serving of ice cream even every day is going to totally like wreck your health. And when it comes to veganism, I think this is. Yeah. <laughs> Let me, as an ex-vegan, obviously, talk about anecdotes, right? Because you guys love them so much. This is how the majority of people eat, right? They consume a substantial amount of junk food daily. We have a thing called modern-day diseases. When did they start? Mm, they started with the industrialization, right? We had processed food out of a sudden. This is when all those people started getting sick. Not when they ate a species-specific diet, which is a bunch of meat. It's particularly oh, problematic because man. a vegan diet is already restrictive. We're already cutting out 
really quite a few foods. There's a reason so many people struggle to be vegan, making that even more restrictive by removing all of the processed foods, including all of the new vegan processed stuff that comes out all the time that gets better and better and better. I mean, look at the state at mock meats now. Tastes absolutely disgusting. I tried it myself, repulsive. And how much better it is compared to 10 years ago. For a lot of it's us, we're asking for rebelling, you know, for that like rebellious teenager inside of us at some point to just go, F this, I'm getting a cheeseburger and not a vegan cheeseburger. <laughs> I also want to say that like, I find the processed food things and like these transition foods, it's so broad. Processed food is not all processed food in the same sense, right? If you compare like a, I don't know, Beyond Burger patty to like Ben and Jerry's ice cream, are they at all similar? What, they both come in packs? They actually are. And now you make me want to look into it. All right, here we go. I just found a picture of a Beyond Burger ingredients list. So let's start with pea protein isolate, expeller pressed canola oil, refined coconut oil, water, yeast extract, maltodextrin, natural flavors, Arabic gum, sunflower oil, salt, sakinic acid, Acetic acid, non-GMO modified, <laughs> non-GMO modified food starch, cellulose from bamboo, methyl cellulose, potato starch, beet juice extract, ascorbic acid, annatto extract, citrus fruit extract, vegetable glycerin, and it contains coconut oil. Now let's have a look at the vegan Ben and Jerry's. It is based on almond milk, liquid sugar, cherries, coconut oil, corn syrup, solids, dried cane syrup, sugar, cocoa, pea protein, sunflower lecithin, fruit and vegetable concentrates, guar gum, natural flavor yet again, lemon juice concentrate, soy lecithin, vanilla extract, locust bean gum, carrageen. So yeah, not comparable at all. At all similar? What, they no. both come in packaging? Okay, fine. But yeah. one has protein, it has B12, it has iron, it has like no wow. sugar. <laughs> it's relatively healthy, right? Especially wow. if you're eating it with, you know, whole wheat bun and maybe wow. just potato fries and whatever else. This is absolutely mind-blowing. That? Actually... What's wrong with that, right? Who cares about the carcinogens in that thing? They even studies. Show me the studies. I do not care, but it's true. Beyond burger is carcinogenic. <laughs> oh man, I can't go on with this. This is too crazy. This video takes the cake. Pretty great, especially if the you know pretty rest great. of your day was relatively low in protein. That sounds like a pretty awesome addition to your day, you know? Wow. But ben and Jerry's, no, there's there's nothing nutritious about that at all. How how are they the same? So just keep that in mind when talking about wow, processed foods. Wow, this is crazy. So we both looked at those ingredients and we came to a totally different conclusion. We have no common ground to stand on. What do we do? This is crazy. Don't you see? <laughs> wow! Don't you see that if you look at a regular burger patty, you find one ingredient, which is meat, right? If you look at an ice cream, yeah, you find sugar, etc., etc. So in normal, regular food, you would see a difference, but not in your so-called food, frankenfood. They're both pumped full with non-edible substances. You don't understand this. Wow. Vegan junk food or whatever. And Crazy. maybe learn enough about nutrition so that you can tell the difference, right? <laughs> yes, the fourth way maybe. You can Somebody should. On a vegan diet, the final kind of nutrition one. Believe that a vegan diet makes you invincible or cures all of your problems. It's just... Yeah, if you think that by now, you're simply an idiot. You know, it the is perfect, what it is. healthiest diet. What do some say? It's a, a species-specific diet. It's the diet we were meant to eat. When you go back and... Yeah, if you say that again, you're an idiot. Look at a lot of these wow. ex-vegan YouTubers, it's their crazy. original content. This is often how they spoke about a vegan diet. They talked about it as having cured something that they were dealing with or being the healthiest diet. It's very, very common. And I think you're just setting yourself up 
for failure because you set yourself up to see any little thing that happens as a failure of your diet. If this diet is supposed to be perfect, if it's supposed to keep you from getting a cold, which is something that vegans have actually said. Nobody's talking about a cold. The point of the story is, of course, as a human being, you want to find a diet that keeps you healthy, right? If you're getting constantly sick, something is wrong. Within veganism, we see it all the time, people do get sick. They lose teeth, they get depressed, their digestion is a mess, etc, etc, etc. At this point, looking at you, listening to you, I really believe that you have a barrage of side effects that you simply ignore, that you simply do not see. You don't even know what it feels like to be normal. I really believe this. As far as I know, you are on antidepressants as well. So I rest my case one more time. I really think that you lost touch with your body to such an extent that you have no idea what it means to be normal. This is really, really scary. Wow. Man, what happens when you get a cold? Hmm. Nobody maybe talks the about it. It's not so perfect. What Nobody. happens when you age a little bit and you start maybe feeling a little bit older? You know, I feel a lot different at 30 than I did at 20. Is yeah, that's actually a great point because this is what my vegan followers back in the day told me. Because I faced all kinds of struggles on my vegan diet and I was transparent. So they told me, yeah, well, you're just getting old, man. That is normal, right? Now you're 30. Yeah, well, how come that after I started eating animal foods again, I felt young again. I felt normal again, essentially. So there is definitely a difference between getting older and feeling different in your 30s than in your 20s, for sure. But it's not the same symptoms. How do you know as a vegan, right? How can you really know that it's your age? In my case, it wasn't. I'm 30 now and I'm not 20 anymore? Or is it because I'm vegan? And when you listen to yeah. some of these ex-vegans talk about the problems they're dealing with, Sometimes it's very vague. Again, not always, but often it is, it's very vague. Yeah, but your presentation is not vague at all, right? Just eat some junk food and eat a little bit of this and eat a little bit of that and you're going to be fine. Just take a bunch of supplements and take a bunch of antidepressants and yeah, man, it's totally fine. Vague kind of brain fog, adrenal fatigue, <laughs> vague digestive stuff. So please remember that. Vague digestive stuff. So I heard from countless of vegans that they had either total constipation or total diarrhea or that they even had SIBO, it was diagnosed, IBS, etc. It's not vague at all. Veganism, it's an yeah. ethical choice ultimately. Yeah, there it's we go. It's not a dietary choice in the sense that you are choosing a exactly the get out of jail free card, right? Because once a person understands that they are in a cult and this diet is detrimental to their health, this is when you will tell them, actually, veganism is not about health at all. Hmm. Somehow, I do remember slightly when I got into veganism, they told me it's good for the planet, good for the animals, and good for my health. Hmm. Not valid any longer. The vegan diet because it's the <laughs> wow. healthiest diet. I mean, if you're doing that, you're um, wrong. <laughs> you're setting hmm. yourself up for failure. You're still going to age. You're probably still going to have medical conditions come up. And there are lots and really? lots and lots and lots and lots of health conditions that have nothing whatsoever to do with diet. So that's it for the nutrition stuff. All right. And this is where I will stop as well at the nutrition part because the video is long enough as it is. If you're interested in further reaction to the same video, let me know in the comment section and I will react to it. Wow, really, this was mind-blowing. I haven't reacted to vegans in a while, but this is everything that is wrong with veganism in one video. Congratulations, Unnatural Vegan. Absolutely phenomenal. Even my mind is blown and I was vegan for four years. I've been ex-vegan now for, I don't know, three years or so by now. Absolute cognitive dissonance, brainwashing beyond belief, suffering suppressed by antidepressants. It is crazy. It is really, really mental. Anyways, guys, this is it for today. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this bad, bad anti-vegan channel, then please check out the links in the description box. I am sure there is something waiting for you there as well. Well, all right, but this is it. 
May God bless you all. May God protect us all. And as always, much love and peace.